All right, news roundup and information overload hour on the Sean Hannity Show. Toll free, our telephone number is 800-941-SEAN. If you want to be a part of the program, our top story remains Neil Gorsuch, the nominee by President Donald Trump to fill the vacant seat of Antonin Scalia on the U.S. Supreme Court. And that was just a slight, small history of a party that smears and slanders and abuses power and put innocent, smart, intelligent, good people uh, like on the, you know, roadkill is nothing to them. Character assassination is nothing to them. And I'm sure by the time this process with Neil Gorsuch is over, that that's probably where it's going to end up. Daniel McLaughlin, attorney, says she's a constitutional expert who wrote The Federalist Society, how conservatives took the law back from liberals. Jay Sekulow, he's the chief counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice. And it looks like, Jay, that you and I were right last night. Democrats are going to move forward with a filibuster. And now uh, Mitch McConnell is forced to uh, decide whether or not he uses the nuclear option, which Donald Trump and I believe, if it comes down to it, they need to do. I don't think there's any question. If, in fact, you have a situation, Sean, where there is a Democratic filibuster, the president's nominee, Neil Gorsuch, needs to be Justice Gorsuch. There are 52 votes. There's probably more than that. There's probably 57, 58 votes right now that would go forward for him if there was a vote. But if the Democrats determine under Chuck Schumer's leadership that they're going to fill a Buster, a well-qualified nominee, by the way, a nominee that received unanimous approval when he was nominated to the 10th Circuit, a nominee that will receive a well-qualified, the highest ranking by the American Bar Association, a nominee that has a long and distinguished now decades-long career at the U.S. Court of Appeals for the 10th Circuit. And unlike a lot of people, I've actually had cases before Judge Gorsuch. So I know the kind of judge he is. He will make an excellent justice. But we don't have the luxury of taking anything for granted with those, not just the Democrats themselves and those on the left, but their interest groups, Alliance for Justice, screaming Justice Gorsuch, a a disastrous choice for the Supreme Court. You've got the National Organization for Women and and groups like the American Atheist. We deserve better than a judge that prioritizes religious beliefs over a woman's right. Then you've got, of course, the ACLU president, Trump is nominating Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court. Last night they said, we'll give you our analysis tomorrow. They gave it today. It was a tepid opposition on his end. But then you've got Nan Aaron, who's probably the loudest voice of these groups, and they're saying, you know, you've got to block them. And, of course, but as Jay, I said, Planned Parenthood, no row, no go. There was nobody that Donald Trump was going to appoint that they would have approved. Let me bring Danielle into this. President Trump said today, Danielle, quote, Democracy can't work when all you're about is trying to destroy somebody from the other party. If we demonize each other, if we block Supreme Court justices, not just because that's how it's supposed to work, but because we didn't win. I agree with President Trump, uh, and I think Senate Republicans back in 2016 could have taken a note of that and not blocked Merrick Garland. But, uh, you know, my, my point actually... I think that Democrats should be very careful about trying to block this and trying to vilify Judge Gorsuch. I think that actually uh, his very extensive uh, written uh, sort of paper trail on the extent to which uh, the administrative state, the agencies, uh, should perhaps have their powers pinned back on separation of powers on a separation of powers basis, would be helpful in constraining uh, a president that Democrats are concerned about might be overreaching in terms of his own power. If their Um, argument is he's out of the mainstream, how do they justify, especially Barack Obama, Joe Biden, John Kerry, Hillary Clinton, Chuck Schumer, Pat Leahy, Dianne Feinstein, Patty Murray, Ron Wyden, uh, Dick Durbin, uh, Jack Reed, uh, Bill Nelson, Tom Carper, Debbie Stabenow, Maria Cantwell, Bob Menendez, when they all voted unanimously to confirm him for the circuit court that he's on now. You make a great point, Sean, and actually I'm not so convinced that he is out of the mainstream. Certainly as it relates to assisted suicide, he's written extensively on his uh, belief that that is not constitutional on uh, many, 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 many fronts. I think the Democrats need to actually be careful about not trying to vilify a a candidate, a nominee, I should say, uh, who is thoughtful, who is restrained, and I'll be honest with you, who is in many ways similar to Merrick Garland. And I have to say that I think Merrick Garland was an olive branch to Republicans 
Republicans. I'm interested in what Jay thinks about this. Yeah. But, you know, he was a man who was restrained. He wasn't Kagan. He wasn't this very, very progressive justice. And I think we've got two things going on. There's the, the legal piece and whether this is a, a person who is qualified, there's no question that he is. But this political gamesmanship, which you're right, goes back to Robert Bork, but certainly something we saw in 2016 with Mitch McConnell. And even people like Ted Cruz saying if Hillary Clinton was elected, they wouldn't confirm anybody that she put to the court. This is a problem uh, for both parties, frankly. Jay? Well, here, here's, the, here's, yeah, here's the thing. First of all, it was Joe Biden, the Biden rule, which said in the last year of a presidency, you don't confirm a Supreme Court justice. He said that. Chuck Schumer agreed with it. They talked about that under President Bush. If there was a vacancy in the last year of his pregnancy, uh, of his uh, presidency, they were not going to confirm a nominee. Look, when you, you lose elections, elections have consequences. That's that's number one. Number two, I, I've also been in front of Merrick Gartland. I mean, our, our lawyers have been in front of Merrick Gartland, and I'm nothing disparaging to Judge Gartland, but they are not the same judicial philosophy. And let me also say this. Merrick Gartland, I will assure you, was not the first choice of President Obama. It was his desperate move to see if maybe that would somehow, because he's more of a centrist, maybe that would have moved the, the needle for the Republicans, which it did not. Here you've got the first nominee of the President of the United States. Danielle acknowledges it. Everybody's having to acknowledge it. And if you listen to what the senators are saying, they know they're in a very difficult spot because this is perhaps the most qualified individual that's been nominated to the Supreme Court of the United States in decades. The most qualified nominee in decades, Republican or Democrat. So you're not going to be able to beat him on intellect. They're not going to be able to do a gotcha question on Neil Gorsuch. That's not going to happen. So the question is, will the groups on the left bring up enough anger and will the George Soros's of the world bring up enough money that they will try a smear campaign on Judge Gorsuch. And the thing that concerns me, Sean, is not his judicial philosophy, which is great, not his writings, which are great, not his personal story, which is great, is they'll make stuff up. They did that to Clarence Thomas. Are they going to do it to Neil Gorsuch? So that's why we don't have the, you and I talked about this last night, we don't have the luxury of assuming he's just going to sail through. I start with this proposition, and I do it with I do Supreme Court cases. I assume maybe I've got four votes, but i got to get five. So I start with the proposition that I have to get votes here. And I think if we're smart on how this is moving forward, we do the same thing. I'm meeting with uh, members of the United States Senate Judiciary Committee members in the next couple of days in Washington. And I want to know from them, because, Sean, you asked the real question here, if push comes to shove, if, in fact... We have a situation where there is a filibuster. Will we do what is necessary to confirm? But there will be Judge nobody, Garland, uh, Judge, Judge uh, Gorsuch. Yeah. But, but there'll be nobody on Donald Trump's list that he gave out before the Correct. election. And you're right; this became a referendum and referendum for the election. And you're right the the rule about not uh, bringing up a nominee in the last year of a presidency. So it does become an election referendum. That's all true, and Schumer supported that. So they they dug their own grave in that sense. Uh, Harry Reid changing the rules as well as it relates to right. cloture and and the nuclear option. And you know now Chuck Schumer is trying to call it the thermonuclear option. Well, they're the ones that changed the rules. It wasn't the Republicans. We'll come back on the other side. We'll let you guys finish this up. Bringing jobs back to America and getting America back to work. This is the Sean Hannity Show. All right, as we continue with Jay Sekulow and Danielle McLaughlin, our top story, of course, the uh, nomination of Neil Gorsuch to be the Supreme Court pick of Donald Trump and, of course, the predictable meltdown by the Schumer crybaby left. Anyway, Jay, you wanted to ask Danielle a question. Go right ahead. So, Danielle, if you were a strategist for a president or for a political party and there was a vacancy in the Supreme Court that came up suddenly, the death of a justice like Justice Scalia, and it was February and there's an election eight months later, would you recommend to your party in power that you go ahead and let that nominee go forward? Or would you do what a strategist would do and say, now, wait a minute, the position of the other party has been in the last year of a presidency. We don't allow a lifetime appointment that will impact the Supreme Court of the United States, especially in a particular seat, which could shift the balance. Or in this particular case, it's just maintaining the status quo. Would you really recommend to your client that you go ahead and just let the nomination go forward? Or would you say, you know what, in eight months, there's going to be a new president. Why don't we let the 
people of the United States vote. When they vote, then we'll decide we can move forward or not. Here's my response to that. The people of the United States did make a decision in 2012, and they re-elected President Obama for a four-year term, a four-year term including the final year of his presidency. So this argument that somehow the American people should make a decision about who should be on the Supreme Court makes no sense because they made it. All right, it doesn't make sense, but you do admit, Danielle, that this was the Biden rule supported by Chuck Schumer. It is something that he said. He took it back. We saw, and we have we have. He, he took it back. It, he never took it back. Years, right. And you know, all this taking back stuff. Have eighty years, but in fact, yeah, you know the Anthony nonsense Kennedy. on the taking back. Yeah, they also take back the fact that the, that that Harry Reid decided to move to the nuclear option on Court of Appeals nominees, which his own allies on his own caucus said we better be careful on this because there will be a day when the Democrats are not sure. in power of the Senate, and I, that happened quicker. I agree with now, you. And I, I actually, I'm an institutionalist, and I think it was the bad, it was the wrong decision to make. I think Harry Reid should not have done that precisely for the reason that you put forth, Jay, which is... Well, then they better not filibuster Gorsuch. They should do it to us. They better not filibuster Gorsuch because there will be a nuclear option. Sure, sure. And I'd like to jump in here. I, I think that it, we have to, if we're going to be fair about this, is a couple of things. The reason that the nuclear option was chosen by Harry Reid was because Republicans held up 100 of Obama's judicial appointments, 100 judges, okay? For no good reason, these people were also eminently qualified. It was a purely political mover. And this is not... Democrats are being obstructed. I agree. But it happens on the other side of the aisle. And a great example is Tom Cotton, who held up Obama's appointment to the U.S. ambassadorship to the Bahamas, a woman who ended up dying of cancer because he wanted to cause President Obama political. He wanted to call him pers- cause him personal pain. So this is happening all over the place. You know, Jay, you say that Merrick Garland was a desperate move. I call it a, I call it an olive branch. He knew he was a yeah. centrist. He hoped that he would get Republican votes. He hoped that people would put the political fray aside and look at a jurist and say, OK, this person is actually qualified. Oh, I think we're going to have to leave it there. But thank you both for being with us. Really appreciate it.